best a man can get. Hi, everyone, and welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. That is the Hall of Famer, Chris Carter. This is the temporary Hall of Famer, Nick Wright. Temporary only because if I say it for too many days, I'm going to get something from him. No. So enjoy it. <laughs> Hang out in it. Do not marinate me in as it. Hall of Famer. I, Chris okay, is in one I of the hear. most recognized Hall of Fames in the world. I'm in a Hall of Fame as of yesterday that means a lot to me, but nothing to it people outside to of us, the Syracuse or Broadcast. But you do have a fan in my wife. Yesterday when I came, she was like, I can't believe you said that about Nick in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it was me. And, and then me. she was like, but that was funny. It was funny. <laughs> it was me. It was cutting. It cut me to my core, but it's fine. Good to see you this morning, my friend. Listen, so we're done morning. with the Hall of Fame. We know you're absolutely. in it. We appreciate yeah, it. We respect it, but we're my, moving on absolutely. from it. Absolutely. Let's do the television. Well said. Thank you. Bampton. Well said. Big you're the one who said it. show. That's why I said that. There might uh, be a little uh, paperwork. You're not in there yet. Uh, it's jam packed perfect. show for you today on this Tuesday. Big Ben season is officially over. We'll discuss what mm. that means for the Steelers. The Saints will try to stay afloat until Drew Brees returns, but we start start with a little Monday night football. Jets, Browns, and OBJ put on quite a show in his return to New York with a highlight reel one-handed catch there. Also scored his first touchdown as a Brown. A career-long 89-yard score. Finished with six catches for 161 yards. Took off that $2 million watch he was wearing before the game, so he caused no controversy. Well, a little bit maybe. And while the Browns beat the Jets 23-3, Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield knows they weren't great. There is still work to be done. Not losing sight of that a win is a win, uh, especially on the road, um, and we needed this one. But, um, you know, field goals early on. We'll take points, but at the same time, we need to be able to finish those drives. And so, yeah, we need to play better. Um, a little frustrating at times. I think, you know, I'll be able to look at this film and get, get a lot better from it. Is it more joy or relief for the Browns tonight? That's a great question. I don't, I don't even think I know the answer to that. I think we're just happy to get a win. I think we're happy to, you know, we came out and had a, a terrible home opener. And, um, you know, everyone was talking about us. And Coach uh, Freddie was... Just talking about how we're going to see what kind of team we are after this um, and, and, and who's really going to ride with you. And, you know, we didn't play our best game, but we hung in there. We fought. We, we made the plays we needed, and we've seen sparks and glimpses of what this team could be. Um, now we have to get right back to it. I got to tell you, if you listen to both those guys and probably the rest of the locker room, it, it you, you, you know, you might not know if they won or lost, just sort of mm -hmm. where the mood is, and that's because they didn't come out and play a great game. Should right. the Browns be encouraged by their win over the Jets last night? Uh, they should. All NFL games are hard, but when you look at what they were facing, starting quarterback, a quarterback of the Jets not there, okay, now their backup, Trevor Simeon, he's in. I believe that he broke his leg or fractured his ankle, ankle. In, in, in that play with Miles Garrett. He's not there. Bringing a guy that doesn't have any experience and to not be able to score more points on that defense without C.J. Mosley in the middle out, without the young kid from Alabama, Quentin Williams, Quentin Williams there. No, they, they, they should be disappointed. That's why their message was tempered. But, yes, they played off in week number one. They were able to get a win on Monday Night Football. They're one and one at this point in the season. They have to get drastically better. If there's thing I'm concerned about, they're, 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 they're with the offensive line. That offensive line, the last half of last season, they played tremendous football. And when they don't play tremendous football, when they don't have a consistent running game, which they haven't had this year, Baker Mayfield is going to be affected by it. His stats are affected by it. But Blaker, Baker Mayfield is a very accurate quarterback. You still have to remember with the wide receiving core with OBJ, there's some chemistry things that are going to be worked out. But, yes, this was a, a win for them. They should have won the game. It was almost impossible for them to, be able to, to lose the game given the injuries and everything that the Jets have faced. But I, I like their comments. I, I liked it because you like them to be able to steady their voice and everything. You'd like them not to be as up and as down as they are. But I talked to OBJ before the game, and mentally, he's in a good spot. 
And Jenna, he's doing everything that I'm telling him to do. I was like, man, if you're going to wear a dang on watch out there, at least wear one for a million dollars or something. He was like, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm wear one for two, two million, million dollars. dollars out there. So he told me he was going to play well. His body is not to 100% yet. He's still having some problems with his hip. But overall, where he is psychologically, he likes the locker room. He likes the feel of this team. And it resulted in him having a tremendous performance last night. No matter what the Jets quarterback situation was going into the game or was once we got into the game, this was a must-win game for the Cleveland Browns. If they had lost to the New York Jets, whether it was Sam Darnold, Trevor Simeon, or Luke Falk playing quarterback, you are on level 10 panic alert for the Browns in their season, mm -hmm. particularly given their upcoming schedule, which I know we can get into later in the show. And so they had to win this football game. And I I would argue one side of the ball played an A-level game. No matter who the quarterback is, the defense played as well as you can play. We're not discounting the Patriots' defensive performances from the first two weeks of the year because they played inferior competition. That defense was exceptional. And on the offensive side of the ball, one player was exceptional for Cleveland, <coughs> Odell. They, there are two A-plus Five out of five star players, not that we project are going to be, but right now in the NFL on the Browns roster. Miles Garrett and Odell Beckham Jr. And yesterday they were both exceptional. Yes. Miles Garrett wrecked the game from the very beginning. Unfortunately, one of his hits did result in Trevor Simeon's ankle being broken, but he was in the backfield whooping Kelvin Beecham the entire night. And Beckham, from the first drive of the game, when he had just a spectacular one handed catch that we've been showing, to late in the game, when he had the longest score of his career and just a vintage Odell play from his Giants days, which is a very basic pass that goes six yards in the air and then he does all the work, where he topped out at, we were talking before the show, nearly 22 miles per hour as the Jets' safety may had, I don't know what angle he's taking, but it's the wrong one, and Odell absolutely streaks down the field. This was your two best players, played two great games, you got a win you needed now, Baker's got to play better. Baker missed some shots. Baker took some shots. And I thought they put Baker in jeopardy more than they needed to late in the game when the game was the game was iced the moment Odell scored that touchdown. They didn't need to throw another pass the rest of the game. They called a pass play at 2.05 left up 20 that Baker got sacked on. Stuff like that needs to be cleaned up as they're figuring out what's going on in their offensive line, but maybe it wasn't the prettiest win, but it was a wildly necessary win for the Cleveland Browns. So if you look at this roster, if you look at the various units on the team, which unit concerns you the most? Where, where do they go back to the drawing board and Say, this is where we really need to shore up. Well, you got to be concerned about the offensive yes. line. And Baker Mayfield, last, last year, down the stretch of the season, they kept Baker clean. I played nine games, only had seven sacks in those nine games. Wow. He's been sacked eight times in his first two games. And it's, 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 it's made his performance suffer. And another thing with Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield has that gun slinger mentality, a lot like Brett Favre. One of the biggest differences between Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers are the interceptions. It, it's not that much different, the passing percentage, it's the interceptions going the other way. And Baker Mayfield has that going since week number four. He's thrown 18 interceptions from last year, which leads the NFL. So if you get him hit and he continues to turn the football over, it's going to be a problem. But Nick had mentioned the defense is only going to get better. I'm not in a panic, but I do have concern, though, with that offensive line. And the other thing for the Browns, big picture, as good as they were at the end of last season, the one asterisk that would be attached to it was the way the schedule fell, they didn't play a lot of really good teams. Since Baker's taken over as the quarterback, they are one and they were one in five last year against teams that finished with a winning record. Their next five games. Rams, Ravens, Niners, Seahawks, Patriots. You know what all five of those teams have in common? None of them have lost. So their next five games are all against 2-0 and teams. This is a stretch of the season where if they can get through it 3-2, and they'll be thrilled. If they 2-3, and they would probably take because the back half of the schedule mm -hmm. is so much easier and where they can pile up some wins. But this next f six weeks, because there's a buy mix in there, could define their year. And look at those defenses that offensive line is going to be facing. If Aaron Donald's healthy, mm -hmm. Baltimore, you saw what they were doing to, uh, to Kyler Murray yep. and going down the line. At the back end. Yes, it, it, it's going to be a tough stretch. And we talked about how they'll deal with adversity. Well, this next stretch of the schedule could be could be a good way for them to see how they're able to handle it and how they will deal with it if they start losing. All right, coming up, has Big Ben played his last snap as a Pittsburgh Steeler? That's next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports Channel. That's on SiriusXM. 
We'll be right back.